अभी आप देखें रणबीर कपूर बिल्कुल ही अलग ट्रेंड में ही इज़ डूइंग ग्रेट जॉब आई वन ऑफ माय ऑल टाइम फेवरेट हीरोज इज रणबीर कपूर यार अब वो तो इनसाइडर है बट आई थिंक इज इज द बेस्ट देयर इज राइट नाउ स्पेशली आफ्टर रॉकस्टार आई वाज ब्लोन अवे आई डोंट थिंक लाइक एनी एक्टर इन फाइव जनरेशन वुड बी एबल टू डू व्हाट ही ही इज अ फैंटास्टिक एक्टर एंड ही इज अ ब्रिलियंट एक्टर एंड ही डजंट ही वेयर्स इट विद ही इज ऑनेस्टली He is one of the finest talents we have in the country. There are very, very few actors that have uh, inspired me in my journey, and Ranveer is one of them. On 29 November 2015, a boy with a beanie and inverted earlobes with less than 10,000 subscribers made a video on a movie that really impacted him. It was called Tamasha. This movie was banned by critics and was deemed a financial failure. A film that connects with many and is currently raved about is also ridiculed for its fandom or cult-like status today. 2015 was a time where this budding creator who calls himself Jamie Pants had no sense of direction, was being ridiculed by his friend group for making YouTube videos, and was deemed as having lost it for not following the confines of what was expected of him. This film provided him perspective and hope that the plunge taken, the risk we embark upon, might just be fruitful. This was not the first introduction to Ranbir Kapoor as an artist and the profound impact that he has had on me purely as a cinema lover. I remember it was 2007 and the two new faces were being launched by Sanjay Leela Bansali. This was the age where social media and the debate around nepotism and the worthy candidates for films or the lack of opportunities for outsiders was not a prevalent discussion. There was actual buzz around how Rishi Kapoor and Anil Kapoor's children would fare in the Hindi film industry. What people tend to forget about that time was that Bansali and Farah Khan shared the same release date for Sabaria and Om Shanti Om. Where one was panned as a disaster, the other went on to become a huge box office success. Yeah. When you look back, what it what went wrong? Because everybody wanted to come on the same date, and it's always a ego problem. You live and learn. That was the first time my movie was clashing with somebody, and uh, Shah Rukh was very gung ho, and uh, Sanjay was also very gung ho, and it just became. really bad people still reference the sentiment around the film sabaria by critics and the industry to be extremely nasty and ugly but what was unanimous about the film was that the male lead definitely had an undeniable charm that everyone connected with a born star with a charisma in front of camera was clear to many while many would assume that the artist would line up similar commercial projects ahead in the future i mean he can afford to do so he comes from the most prestigious film family of bollywood this artist had a keen eye for different storylines some would consider these choices to be risks or eccentric but for the individual they were just compelling stories i have a theory why my generation of millennials that were born in the 90s and grew up in the 2000s connect with an actor like ranbir kapoor While he has made fun of for doing countless number of coming of age stories, we deeply connected with the journey of those characters because we were also experiencing similar emotions and thoughts in our own lives. The constant generational battle between parents as individuals choose something offbeat or simply experiencing failure only to persevere and try again were themes that were consistent with a lot of Ranbir Kapoor's filmography. I've always wondered for others what is according to you Ranbir Kapoor's most impactful film performance something that deeply connected with you and why do tell me in the comments below 2009 was a very interesting year because it set in the mind of the artist of the reality that he has to deal with while working in Hindi cinema and sadly the artist within him that might have to put forth a pragmatic approach in the future wake up said ajay prem ki gazab kahani and rocket sing were the lineup of films and kapoor himself describes as what he thought would be the eventual outcome of those films when i did rocket sing salesman of the year i thought yaar this is my munna bhai you know i'm set for life uh when i did when i did ajab prem ki gazab kahani i thought i'm screwed like you know i like nobody will offer me movies and my career as an actor is over so you don't have the formula it tells you a lot about what the indian audience was receptive to in 2009 as wake up said went on to become a semi hit ajab prem ki gazab kahani went on to become a blockbuster while rocket sing a film that many consider to be one of the most underrated commercial films in hindi cinema was deemed as a disaster What however again was solidified about the actor was that irrespective of the financial outcome of his films his boundless talent was something that no one could deny while everyone was privy to his range as an artist it was his creative choices after this that deeply affected my life and enhanced my love for his craft 
In 2011, I was in 11th grade, studying in a boarding school in Dehradun, where we had limited access to theatres and films. We would be handed over 300 rupees if we got permission for an outing, and me and my friend decided in a single screen theatre to watch the Intiaz Ali film Rockstar. The only buzz that we knew of during that time, especially as there was limited exposure to trailers and songs, was that Ranbir's proposal scene is hilarious. What I experienced without any iota of exaggeration can be best described as a musical trance. A spectacle so vivid in my memory that I still remember the very moment I got goosebumps as Mohit Chauhan's powerful voice sang Kun Faya Kun. I clearly remember not understanding what was happening. Why were we deeply connected with this film? What was the psychological space of Janardhan that deeply resonated within all of us? Is it because we were dreamers just like him? Is it because we seek for inspiration to fuel our craft in a similar fashion? I remember seeing the film multiple times, not being able to fathom anyone else play Janardhan other than Ranbir Kapoor. I could not think anyone else other than him having those conversations in the Hindu college canteen with Komud Mishra. This man had given everything to this role. His magnetic presence and energy in Sadda Haq was unparalleled. It was as if he was taken over by something. Him breaking down helplessly as he sang Nadan Parinde to A.R. Rahman's iconic tunes made me just wish for an alternate reality where Janardhan and Heer could have a happy ending. I wondered what could be his next move? How the hell can this man top this performance? And in came the presumably quirky Anurag Basu film Barfi. And the man proved yet again that they don't make many like him. Aided by a magnificent supporting role performance by Priyanka Chopra as Jilmil, Ranbir broke everyone's heart with this rendition of Barfi while winning us over with his charm enhanced by Basu's unique comedic timing initially, everyone still revisits the iconic scene when Burfi realizes that love is not an equal playing field in this world. I still remember playing that scene again and again and wondering how the man did not miss a beat, never making the sentiment overdramatic but just perfect as Shruti looked on in helpless despair. Burfi's unique storytelling and the beautiful performance really cemented his position as the new generation star. I also realized that these coming fate stories of Ranbir Kapoor are time in your life specific. And by that I mean depending on what you're going through, the storylines accordingly deeply impact you. Tamasha is one such film for me because I clearly remember being in the worst possible phase in life. And no wonder I was sobbing throughout the film as Ved tried to come to terms with his own purpose in life. Every single scene as he addressed himself in front of the mirror seemed like an extension of the conversations I've had with myself trying to figure out this intimidating thing called life. Darta hai? Dar lagta hai? Apni kahani mujhse poochta hai? Kaayar to kis se darta hai? Bata, bol apni kahani. Kya hai tere dil ke andar? These lines still give me PTSD of the thoughts that were running through my mind as I realized after the film that I will only have myself to blame if I don't take the reins of my own life. Dramatic, yes. Is it true? Hell yes. What I love about him as an actor is that in the last 4 or 5 years, he has still taken risks that trade experts and analysts would have told him to stay far away from. He did a film like Bombay Velvet, which I believe was undeservedly panned unanimously by both critics and audiences. While deserved misses like Roy and Beshram got the reception that was expected, it is a reaction for movies like Jaga Jasus that really broke my heart. For the absolute disdain with which we treat any form of innovation, a musical adventure film proving to be an extension like the Tintin series universe was something that Hindi cinema had never seen and just because of its overindulgent screenplay in the second half, we absolutely dismissed it. What is also consistent with Kapoor's trajectory in his career is his experience with films that get delayed. Jaga Jasu's falling prey to the same problem and Brahmastra and Shamshera have been under post-production for so long that there seems to be a sense of uneasiness within Kapoor. Hence, he has signed so many projects to get back into the groove. Can I though speak about my unpopular opinion that might ruffle some feathers here? You can tell me in the comments below what you think about these. I'm just not a fan of Ranbir Kapoor's commercial film choices and by that I mean films that tick several boxes of what is expected from larger than life stories. These include movies like Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, Ay Dil Hai Mushkil and Sanju. These movies have spectacular songs, amazing performances by the cast but for me personally they are either generic in its messaging or problematic with its social themes. I went to the theatre being a Ranbir Kapoor fan but always have either a meh or a disappointed reaction from those films as they simply check off the tropes that is expected of the themes of those films. 
Let me know if you feel the same way about the commercial romantic film genre or even biopics for that matter. They perform spectacularly well in the box office which often make me a little skeptical of the psychological space Ranbir Kapoor might be in. Are these risks that cater to a particular audience even worth it? Is the reason for me respecting him as an artist even worth him taking the plunge knowing very well it doesn't have the potential to do exorbitant numbers? With the success of films like Sanju and Ae Dil Hai Mushkil, will Ranbir play it safe now and not make the unique choices as an artist that he once did and was the reason why we fell in love with him? I often think that the current landscape of the OTT platform is actually perfect for an artist like him who is constantly seeking to challenge himself. but whether or not he would ever transition to make that decision only time will tell what i can say is that as a cinema enthusiast i have been eagerly waiting for him to return on the big screen or in any project as we get to see very little of him and when we do there's always something special and unique to witness and that was the video guys write down in the comments below what are your favorite performances of ranbir kapoor please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handles are right in front of you follow me at jammy pants for Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.